You're very welcome to the first of our new midweek talks on the letter to the Galatians. I want to begin with some words from Galatians chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 and then moving on to verses 11 to 24. So we hear God's word together. This is Galatians chapter 1 beginning at the first verse. Paul, an apostle, Sent not by men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And to all the brothers and sisters with me, to the churches of Galatia. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in my Judaism beyond my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my father. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him amongst the Gentiles, My immediate response was not to consult with any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him for 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that I am writing to you is no lie. Then I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that they were in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. Why read Galatians? Why read this book from the Bible written 2,000 years ago? It's a fair question. One that Paul, who penned this letter, seeks to answer in these verses. And he does that by stressing who this message is from. Because Galatians is worth listening to because of its source, because of the one who sent it. On one level, the answer to that question is Paul. But he points beyond himself. In verse 1, Paul calls himself an apostle, a messenger. This letter is not simply his thought. No, they are the thoughts of the one who sent him. The one Paul identifies as Jesus Christ and God the Father. This letter is worth hearing because it is sent by God via Paul. And so in verses 11 and 12 we read, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it By revelation from Jesus Christ. So why read the letter to the Galatians? Well because this letter comes from God. And to prove it Paul goes on to explain how not only he couldn't have got this message from somebody else. But also how it matched the teachings of Jesus when he was on earth. In these verses, Paul takes us through his journey, starting off in verse 13, explaining how he once persecuted the church. He was a murderer seeking out Christians in an attempt to destroy the Christian message. Here's a man who zealously sought out people in order to destroy the message that he is now proclaiming. A man with closed ears and a closed mind. A man who simply wouldn't hear and couldn't hear the message of Jesus. Paul's point here is that in his past life, before he was a Christian, he wouldn't have even listened to the message he is now proclaiming. He is showing us that he couldn't have got this message before his conversion. 
Then Jesus speaks to him. It's a famous account recorded three times in the book of Acts. As Paul is travelling to Damascus in order to imprison Christians and stamp out their message, he is surrounded by a blinding light, falls to the ground and hears a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? The voice identifies himself as Jesus and directs him to Damascus to await further instructions that come to him in the form of a dream. And from then, he starts preaching. He didn't go to Jerusalem to get his message or training from the disciples. He simply starts preaching Christ. He starts passing on that message that he passes on in this letter. Paul's point here is that during this time of conversion, that's when he received his message and he received it from none other than Jesus himself. That's all very well and good. But how do we know that this revelation from Jesus was genuine? How do we know it was true? If Paul received his message quite independently of the disciples who knew Jesus, how can we know that this is the same message that Jesus preached on earth? Well, Paul answers that with the rest of his biographical narrative. Because when news of his preaching reaches the church in Jerusalem, when then the apostles hear about it, they're told in verse 23, the man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. Notice that report. Notice how Paul's message is described. The faith he once tried to destroy. The implication here is that Paul's message is consistent with the preaching of the apostles who knew and heard the earthly Jesus. Paul's message is consistent with Jesus' message despite his independence from those who knew Jesus. And to sure things up, the apostles summon Paul to test him and in chapter 2 they affirm it and add nothing to it. The disciples affirm Paul's preaching completely. It is consistent with the preaching of those who heard and knew Jesus. Despite receiving his message independently of the disciples, Paul's gospel is consistent with that, with that of Jesus Christ. Paul's point in all of this is that his message was given to him by Jesus and it was verified by those who knew and heard the earthly Jesus, the disciples. And therefore, if this message is from Jesus, the way, the truth and the life, then we need to hear it. That's why we should read Galatians, because of who it's from. We read Galatians because it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.